Hey guys, Mo Trapper. Um, I'm going to put together a video today on uh, an interesting catch that I had this morning, uh, and it was a domestic dog. <clears throat> you know, there's it's a little bit controversial, I think. I don't see a lot of videos on it. Uh, I think Trapped in the Ozarks maybe did a video about it, uh, but that's really the only one I'm aware of. But uh, it's going to happen. So if you trap, uh, I mean, in the state of Missouri, uh, I'm sure there are places in the country, you know, maybe way out in, uh, you know, North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, uh, places like that where there just aren't any houses around. You know, you can get into places where you don't have to worry about it too much. But if you're in the east at all, I mean, there's dogs everywhere. So you know it, it's going to come up if, if you're trapping in the east you're you're going to catch domestic dogs um it's not a big deal um you know if you're nervous about it don't be it's usually not a big deal at all uh you'll see in this video this is a pretty good sized pit bull um wasn't real happy with me but uh but you know released just fine took off and uh, luckily did not get into another trap he was headed right for another set and I thought oh please don't let him get in another one but uh, but anyway <clears throat> you know it was a big dog he was uh, a little bit aggressive at first so uh, you know I just talked calmly to him and and you know got the catch pole on him and, and let him go um, one thing is uh, I, I, I recommend traps uh, MB 550 MB650 laminated or the cast jaw, the Duke 550 or 650. This one was caught in Duke 650. Um, but I recommend um, cast jaws or laminated jaws, you know, something that's going to be soft because that's, that's going to make a big difference on that animal's comfort. And also, you know, this, this was a full pad catch. It was a big dog. You can see him jumping around and, and, um, yeah, I mean, he, he put the hurts on the shock spring a couple of times uh, as I was trying to get him, get him caught in the catch pole. So you want to try to make it as comfortable as you can for the animal. Um, so I recommend good traps so that you're not going to damage their feet at all. Um, I, I've got some Bridger number twos, some Dogless number twos. I really like those traps. I got them early, you know, when I first started trapping. Um, they, they work very well but they're not laminated and I, I need to get those laminated because that that is a little bit of a problem with those traps they are sharp uh you know the jaws are kind of thin and i have seen cut paws on raccoons and i've seen cut paws on uh on coyotes with those traps so you know if you think you're gonna catch domestic dogs or there's a potential for that i recommend getting a, a, a trap with an offset uh, big wide cast jaw is the best you know they're going to be the most comfortable and it's going to do the least damage um, on this dog there's no damage whatsoever to that dog i mean i'm sure his paw is a little sore i'm sure he was pretty cold last night but um but you know he's going to be no worse for the wear and uh, and hopefully i'll never see him again uh, that's another thing about catching domestic dogs that i've learned and i've caught i don't know eight or ten of them over the last five years um I've never seen the same dog twice uh, in a set. So I think they wise up pretty quick once they're caught. I think they understand that that was pretty uncomfortable and they didn't like it too much and they don't, they don't run around the same areas. You know, I, I don't want them where, they, where I caught this one. You know, they're running my deer around and stuff. So hopefully they'll stay out. Um, you know, there is a law in the state of Missouri that domestic animals have to be within their owner's control at all times. Obviously, that was not the case with this dog. He was not on his property, and his owner did not have control of him. Um, no collar on this dog either. So, you know, it's it's one of those things, um, you know, would I have been in the right legally uh, to dispatch this dog? I think probably so. But, you know, I'm not out there to kill domestic dogs. Um, I want to kill predators. Uh, that's what I'm trapping for and you know Our dogs running deer around on this place and you know causing problems. Absolutely, but at the same time uh, You know, I think it doesn't matter um, It doesn't matter if you're right anymore At least in the world we live in today. It doesn't matter um, You know whose fault it was because 
nothing is anybody's fault anymore, right? Um, no, nobody takes responsibility for anything they do. So, if you know, if that dog were to, you know, not come back home, it wouldn't be the owner's fault who let it run. You know, it wouldn't be the owner's fault because he was breaking the law. Because again, the law is written so that they have to be in control of their animals at all times. Wouldn't be his fault, not in his mind. It would be somebody else's fault because everything is somebody else's fault in today's world. That's what we live in right now is everything is somebody else's fault. So I think you got to take that into account and think about that a little bit. Uh, again, my policy is I turn them loose. Um, I've, you know, you'll see on this video that this is a pretty good sized pit bull. Um, I've let go uh, another pit bull that was even bigger than this one. So, I mean, it, I'm not saying there wouldn't, there isn't the possibility of a situation where you can't let a dog go because it is so uh, vicious. You know what I mean? I, that, I can see that being potentially a thing. But in my experience, I've let some pretty big pit bulls go, and I haven't had too much of a, of a problem. So I think 99% of the time, you know, you're going to be able to let that dog go, and it's it's going to be okay. Um, I use. Uh, a four foot steel catch pole I got from F&T Trapping Supplies. I think that's a good tool for everything. It's a bit long, it's a bit heavy, it's a bit cumbersome, especially if you're like packing in, you know, walking a long distance or something like that. And I, I so I understand why some guys buy the PVC catch poles, but <clears throat> you gotta think about if you're gonna release domestic dogs, especially big pit bulls, if that pit bull decides to come after you after you let it off that catch pole, which is really the diciest point, right? So once you get the catch pole on them and pin them down and let the trap off of their foot, when you go to let that dog loose from the catch pole, that is really the diciest time of the whole situation usually, right? And that's when they're going to decide whether they want to come take a piece of you or whether they want to just run off, right? And uh, that big, heavy steel catch pole, I like it, you know, for several reasons. But one of the reasons is if that big pit bull decided to come to try to take a bite out of me at that point, I've got something in my hands that I can defend myself with a little bit. You know, and that PVC, I think you could whack a pit bull between the ears with it and they would laugh at you. You know what I mean? I don't think it's going to do much. So anyway... Um, I recommend using good traps, and that's again MB or Duke 550, 650, something with a big cast uh, or laminated jaw, something that's rounded on the edges, it's not going to cause cuts. And I recommend a big heavy catch pole, just in case you get in a situation where you turn one loose and things go sideways and you need to whack them, you know what I mean, so that they don't attack you. Um, but, uh, but anyway, again, I know it's a little controversial. You know, uh, you'll see the video. Um, it, it's part of the deal. So if you're going to trap, uh, I would be prepared to to deal with domestic dogs because it's probably going to happen. Uh, it's not a big deal. You'll see in the video he runs off just fine. It's just it is what it is. So anyway, that's going to be it. Thanks, guys. <laughs>